Hey guys, I am back for another instructive video. And it's possible that anyone who religiously follows my, uh, my videos and my streams may have watched a stream that I did yesterday, where um, I think it was the first game I played uh, against the Petrov. And I went into this line after e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, I played d4. Um, and then after the game, I was trying to recall uh, this Anish Giri game from several years ago where Anish lost in, uh, in like under 25 moves. Um, so I found the game and I wanted to make a video of just me analyzing the game. I don't think I've done this before where I just go over like a high level GM game just as its own video. So hopefully this will be instructive. Hopefully if there's any E4 players out there who don't know what to play against the Petrov, uh, you can learn a thing or two from this. Because uh, D4 isn't the most popular move. I think these days white uh, usually takes on E5, but D4 is very playable. And as we'll see in this game, it has some uh, some venom, especially if, uh, if white's prepared and maybe black isn't so well prepared. Um, so the main line here is after knight take e4, um, white can take on e5. And I had this, uh, I think I had this position in my game yesterday, and I was hesitant to take on e5 because of this move bishop c5. But it turns out after bishop c5, white has uh, a nice response. And now I should note the white player in this game was Zoltan Almasi, uh, another super GM. We should also note that Anish Giri is one of the most solid players in the world. Um, very good at, uh, at drawing pretty much anyone. Um, so it's very impressive that uh, Almasi won this game seemingly so easily. Uh, so the move white plays here is a bit surprising because f2 is attacked and it seems like white should defend somehow. Um, maybe with a move like bishop e3. Uh, but this is why I was hesitant to go into this line, because white doesn't really want to play bishop e3 and leads to just damage pawn structure. So white plays a nice counterattacking move, bishop to c4, uh, sacrificing f2. So black takes on f2, and now the main idea for white is to take on f7. And um, now it leads to some, some really interesting line after king take f7, queen d5 check, uh, the king is essentially being ripped from its, uh, its shelter. Uh, if it goes back to a square like e8, uh, then white is just, I think, winning material after bishop g5, uh, almost trapping the queen, forcing bishop e7, and then after take, 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 white is uh, white up material here. White is not up material, but white has a really nice position. Um, easy development, black is almost not at all developed. Um, the rooks can come in very easily, and yeah, I would be happy here as white. So going back, uh, they go into the main line instead of king to e8, black plays king g6, which is uh, already looking a bit suspicious, but this position has occurred before. Uh, if we check in the database here, uh, there's been, okay, there's been two games on Lee Chess. I think there's been more in the Masters database. Yeah, there's been just over a dozen in the Masters database. So it's still some, some sort of theory. Uh, this game, Almasi takes on c5. Knight take h1. And then uh, they're in a situation where black is up material, but the king's on g6 and the knight's on h1. And I feel like if you're going to go into this as white and you're, you're well prepared, maybe you're supported with computer preparation, then it's a line to go into. Just because, uh, I mean, it's so difficult for black to defend, as we'll see in uh, what happened in this game. So knight c3 is played. And then Gary plays this move d6, which I think is a novelty, at least was a novelty at the time. Uh, we can quickly check the opening stats here. Um, h6 is played almost exclusively. And uh, anyone who's serious about studying this line further, I would recommend... Uh, to look deeper into this move h6. Um, and actually, I've, I didn't note this, but uh, this is part of a Lee Chess study, which I will share in the video description. So anyone who wants to look over these lines a bit closer and uh, maybe add your own analysis, you can do so. Um, everything is saved here. And um, you can see my, my brief annotations. 
So what I've done here, I've uh, I've pasted two games. Uh, one game was between Sveshnikov and Fridman, where Sveshnikov won uh, very smoothly. And then another game was against uh, or between Turgut and Mole. Um, and this was actually a correspondence game. Uh, Tansel Turgut is actually a friend of mine, um, and he's one of the top correspondence players in the world. And they went into like a really crazy computer line variation where if you turn on Stockfish, it says Black's winning, but um, it got really messy. So I'm not going to go into this uh, now, but if anyone wants to take a look, the games are included in this, uh, in this chapter. So going back to the main line, pawn d6, and white plays queen c4, which is really nice move, uh, somewhat of a multi-purpose move, um, as white wants to keep the queen on c4, maybe supporting knight h4 check. Also, there's, uh, there's many thematic ideas of knight d5, just bringing a piece closer to the king, targeting c7. Um, so black's still under pressure here. Uh, so Gary plays h6. Turn off opening book. Knight d5. And here black is, is under serious pressure because knight takes c7 as a threat. And, uh, and the king's still on g6 and black's not developed. And here Gary played the, the losing move. Um, I think what he should have done is play c6. And then there's some line, knight f4 check, king h7, queen d3, king g8, and then taking on d6. This is just uh, the, um, the stockfish line that I was researching earlier. And it seems like white has great compensation for, uh, for being down a rook, because this knight is eventually going to be lost. Then white will only be down the exchange. The d-pawn looks very strong. So um, but yeah, this looks very playable. So going back, what I'm going to do is put this on training mode, um, or essentially the chess training mode, where people can't see the notation, because there is a, a nice exercise coming up um, after rook f8. Hopefully people didn't look earlier and, and see what white's going to do here. Um, but I will show the next, uh, the next move, uh, queen e4, king to f7, and then, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is a position, this is white to move and find the strongest move. Um, I believe there's only one winning move here for, uh, for white. So if you want to, pause the video, find the strongest move, but I'll go ahead and show it. Move is bishop take h6, um, which is just, just crushing. Uh, the idea is that uh, after what happened in the game, Pawn take h6, white can play queen h7, and the king just has no, no safe place. Knight takes e7 is coming, um, like king e6, or king e8, knight takes e7, uh, I believe just wins the queen. Um, so the game just ended really quickly. Uh, after king e8, knight takes e7, queen takes e7, queen takes e7, white now has a queen for a rook and a bishop, and also white has, what, two extra pawns? So Gary tried to somehow survive, but uh, White's technique was just too strong. Um, <laughs> wasn't too difficult to convert this position. Just keep grabbing pawns. And then, oh, did I say queen for a rook and bishop? I meant queen for a rook, bishop, and knight. But because White just has so many extra pawns and black's not really coordinated, and uh, the king is just so exposed, Okay, we'll see how white wins, wins this. After queen h5, uh, yeah, the king has no safe place, e6. And black resigned here, given that knight take f5 is coming. And yeah, what to do. Um, yeah, so that's how you beat Anish Gary in 22 moves. Um, the, the more important point, I think, from this is to uh, perhaps look at the, the opening a bit closer. Um, especially in such a sharp variation uh, resulting from this very early bishops to c4. Um, I think this is a cool line, uh, especially players who might prefer crazier types of positions, more attacking types of positions. Um, I think this is a, a nice line against the Petrov, because a lot of Petrov players are, um, are perhaps a bit I don't say boring in nature, but maybe a bit more solid in nature. So this is a type of line which can go against the style of a Petrov player. 
Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, again, I'll leave the link uh, to the study in the description. Um, if you want to add your own analysis, what you can do in LeechS is clone the study, um, which if you look below the board, you get these buttons. You would click this and then clone, uh, which we can't see. Let me zoom in. Clone right here. And then that will take you to a page where you basically create uh, a duplicate of the study, and then you can, um, you can do whatever you want with it. And probably what I'll do in the future is I will, um, I will just add more chapters to the study. Uh, right now, there's only one chapter. Zoom in here. Um, but uh, the more types of game analysis I, I do, I'll, I'll just keep adding games so people can access them easily. So I'll end it there. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the future.